Hello and welcome to The Hard Questions. I'm Solomon Seruanza. On this episode, I host the Commissioner of Prisons and the spokesperson of the Uganda Prison Services, Frank Baini. As he takes us deep into the state of our prisons, we will also be discussing issues of human rights and the way the prisoners are treated amidst a shrinking budget. That is our center of conversations. Commissioner Frank Baini, thank you so much for accepting to speak to us. Uh, I'm, I'm glad, uh, dear viewers and Solomon, to be hosted by this. I hope I will be able to answer the hard question. I hope so too. But uh, I, I can uh, start by accounting. <laughs> right now we have 75,000 inmates. Uh, fortunately, uh, they are in 264 prisons and clustered in 19 regions. And they are being managed by 14 uh, 1,483 staff and uh, the, the improvement on it is that the, the convicts are now 52 percent and the remand are 48 percent. Uh, if I look at the specific category, the women are just 3,000 which makes something like 1.5 percent of the total population of inmates and the uh, babies with their mothers are uh, uh, by uh, by this morning, they were uh, 415. Wow. I, I, Frank, you remember about 10 years ago, while working with NTV, I had an opportunity of, you know, visiting Uganda's biggest prison, right? Uh, that is the Luzira uh, prison. While you were speaking about the numbers, I was disturbed by the percentage of prisoners who are on remand. 48% is quite a big number. Yeah, it is. It? it is. It is very big. It is very big. Remember, our capacity is 20,000, and we are having 75,000. So ideally, we would be breathing a bit easy if, let's say, the, the remands were only something like below 10%. Because ideally, that's a big pack of people awaiting justice. Do you then blame the justice system for the over congestion? Well, I don't know whether to, to blame it, but the fact is that it is because of the of the of the of the justice system that we have a pile up or a backlog of cases. Uh, because if the justice wheel was moving faster, like these days, there is an attempt work on it, improve the number of judges, improve the number of police detectives, DPP. If, if, if the justice system will was faster, definitely there would be fewer demands compared to what we have. That means that the justice system's ability to try people is, is somewhat low and it's affecting you? Absolutely. You know we are at the tail end of justice. The police which arrests and investigates the DPP which peruses the files, then the courts which presides over these cases. Now, as long as they are not running at the same tandem, the, 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 the other ones will have a congestion of papers, but for us we shall have always a congestion of people. Doesn't it therefore come to why does the police arrest people and try them before collecting enough evidence, because that's where it starts from. When you look at the way it works is that you arrest people, especially, you know, you arrest people, bring them to court, remand them, and then most of the times the DPP, you know, and, and, and all those baby steps and clay steps of trying someone take time. And so you find that you have 48% of your inmates waiting for justice. Well, I, on remand. I am not sure whether I'm competent to speak for the arresting agencies. Well, you should blame them. But I, I, they also have the explanation. That's why it is always better that you engage them. They also have the reason. No, but it affects you at the tail if end they of are it. If they are mandated, is to arrest and align people to court, and they, they are not doing it the way we expect them, then they have a better explanation. But rightly so, when you ask them, the general, like me and you, I understand, you'll find that even the ratio of one uh, of a policeman to the society, our, our numbers are abnormally low 
for the, the, the law enforcement, you will find that a, a state attorney is supposed to be perusing an average of about 1,000 files in, 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 in a month, which becomes very hard for a normal human being. Some time back, a judge was allocated 365 files or cases uh, in a year, meaning that every day he has to handle a case, there is no holiday, there is no falling sick, and, but you know some cases even take, take a year to go through. So uh, I, as long as the numbers are not tiring in terms of the enforcement vis-a-vis -vis the, 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 the rate of the increase of crime, we, we, we are bound to still have a child. And so you have people who are rotting in jail because the, because the justice system has failed them. Well, I, it beca Listen, uh, Frank, you are arrested today, and like you and I always say, we're all potential arrests. Right now, the ministers involved in the Mabati scandal are crying in the dock, and others are being arrested. They never thought at any one moment that they would be arrested. Anyone can be a potential, you know, prisoner. You're arrested, you're put there, and you're on remand for all this time. Some of them are some rem people of remand. You and I have talked before they take years on remand without being tried. And, 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 and it speaks bad about yeah, of course, the justice like, system, uh, but also it affects you as the... So much, but you know, the, some of it is part of the law. Uh, and, and this affects mainly the capital offenders. While the constitution is very clear that a, a person arrested on a minor offense, uh, after 60 days, if the, the, the state is not ready to... Pro, to, pro, to pro, proceed with trial, this person should get mandatory bail. And while for the capital offences, it should be 180 days, which is six months. Now, the bulk of the people who we have, actually the lower courts are okay because we seem to have a good number of, the, the, when we look at the distribution of the magisterial areas, it, 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 it runs much faster compared to the capital offences, which is the high court. High court is what has a lot of issues and court of appeal and the like. Now, while the law is clear about the, 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 the 180 days, the law is silent of what happens to Baine after the state comes out and says, yes, it is six, uh, six months, we are ready to proceed, we have enough evidence. No matter what they will tell you, is they give you the summary of what happened and they say, wait for the next convenient session. It is convenient to who? I don't know. It can be convenient, it may be, be, be convenient after two years, after one and a half years, and that's where the challenge is. And that's a matter of law. Because if you have said the evidence is available, I've been committed to the High Court, how long am I supposed to wait to be tried? It's a very technical thing. Yeah, and, and, and it indeed affects you. And this speaks to the congestion in, 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 in the prison. Absolutely. Luzero, for example, was built for about 600 prison inmates. That is right upper now, prison to be specific. Upper prison, yeah, to be specific. It right now accommodates about 3,000. Slightly right above 3,000. Think about that for a second. You have space that is meant for 600 inmates, but you have 3,000 plus inmates. Yeah, and what it means that places which were formerly workshops for rehabilitation have been converted into accommodation in order to, to, to accommodate those numbers. And Frank, it becomes difficult. I mean, I've visited Luzira, for example, and other prisons, and these inmates sleep terribly, you know. The congestion is unbearable in there. Yeah, of course, congestion in Uganda is, 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 is a bigger problem than prisons. No, 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 let's, let's focus because on the... I am trying, I'm trying, I'm coming. When you go to the road these days, there is no, you can never estimate your time you are going to move from your home to town. The whole thing is that our roads, the way they were made then, they are not expanding, yet the population is increasing and everything. When you go to hospitals, right now what used to be the, 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 the corridors like of Murago, you will find now patients lining up. So I think, to me, uh, as a country, we need to sit down and, and do a, a, a comprehensive strategy for managing congestions in the different areas. For us in prisons, we have had one challenge, that the rate of physical infrastructure development is 2% per annum. But the population growth of inmates is 10% per annum. So that means we, we, we cannot catch up 
with the population overflow into the prison if we go by, the, by this. But why are we having a 2% uh, infrastructure growth? It's because of the budgetary constraints. If you find that you have a shortage of, 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 of about 100 billion of what you need to use, and then you have to prioritize and make sure people live. So that's where the challenge comes in. That's where when you have numbers, you cannot do effective rehabilitation. You have to spend a lot of money in managing the health of the inmates because of that congestion. These contagious diseases can move. Now, you will actually find that these diseases, they are not even manufactured here, but on entry, you will discover that almost on every 10 people that come in, four have a particular ailment on pre-entry medical examination. Now, when you pack this, so it becomes now you are going to multiply the problem and you have to keep doing firefighting. And that's the challenge. How many inmates sleep in a particular room? Of course, our, our wards are not, uh, they, they, they are different sizes. They are in sizes of 50, they are in sizes of 100. So it all depends on, 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 on which size. Paint for us a picture. In those well, wards. Of course, our, 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 our wards are like dormitories. I would call them like school dormitories, except that for men we don't have beds. Uh, there are two reasons. Of course, having beds is also not cheap, but some, we have this, we, 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 are, we are preferring the down because of the security matter. All those iron bars you see, you, 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 they, you think they are using for beds, when they, if they decided to change them into tools, they can break that prison in, in, in a space of one hour. But for the women, they have the beds and the like because with them, they are not a security threat. So, but sometimes also you wonder that if we had the beds, how would we manage? Because sometimes moving bodies is okay, but you cannot now squeeze a bed onto one. Yeah. Frank, you, you, we'll talk about the budget allocation in just a while. But let's look at how you treat these prisoners. The Uganda Prison Services has been on the spot so many times for human rights violations. And indeed, there are different reports that have spoken to, to this issue. Um, of course, in, in so many reports, they have talked about you know, the Uganda police, the army, but also the prisons has been highlighted, the way you treat prisoners. We have seen, I think the most recent pictures that we saw, are pictures of, you know, Alan Sewanyana and Segirinya, all lamenting the way they were, they were treated. They, they asked for, um, to get special treatment. That was denied. They became so ill. We remember the pictures. They narrate their ordeal there. It is heart-wrenching how they say they were treated when they were in your custody. Well, uh, for, the, uh, for the reports, I have also been here for some time. Uh, the issue of human rights, especially in Uganda, has been a long journey. And that's why if you look at the 1995 constitution, that chapter 4 is the biggest chapter in the whole constitution about the issues of human rights, partly because of the history also of the country. But I want to tell you that in the last 10 years, if you check the human rights reports from every angle, I think we, we deserve some some credit that we have really moved a very, 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 very big stride in, in, in managing the human rights. But of course with humanities, sometimes you can't avoid the individual of a serious action, but the beauty is that it is a responsibility of the individual who violates the rights of the inmate. And since it became the act, matters have been easy for us. If you do it, the law is there and you are handled. We have over 10 of us of our staff behind the bars because of that, of, of what they do, what they have done to the inmates. By and large, like when you talk about the conditions of the of the honorable members who are with us, there are certain things which are beyond our capacity. If you say, me, my medication must be taken outside the country, we don't have any jurisdiction beyond the boundaries of Uganda. Two. Whatever we do, we do it in, 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 accord, in accordance to the court's decision. We have a, doc, a, a, a team of doctors, we have different health facilities, but we even have the option that 
if you are in her facility A and we find that you need an upgrade, then we we'll shift you to the next. When you come to Makshon Bay National Faro Hospital and we find that you need more tests than Makshon Bay can handle, then we move to Murago. If you are in Guru, right now if you walked to Racho Hospital, you will find some of our inmates there. But you see, sometimes when it is rotating around politicians, the, the, the sound goes beyond the sky. For other reasons, definitely you would understand. Uh, 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 the, the, the comfort of a member of parliament, the comfort of a minister, is not the comfort of, of Bayine and, 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 and Solomon. So the, the, the conditions drastically change. The feeding, the environment. I keep telling people that what they call imprisonment and what you think is, is, is an upset on the system uh, lies on the head. What goes through your mind is what affects what happens to you. Yeah, but I mean, Frank, you can't run away from a fact that someone is in terrible shape. And you as a person running prisons need to raise the red flag and say, look, this person deserves to go and get proper health care, which we cannot. Fortunately, we have not failed to do that. And that's why even when there was a, a, an alarm that you see the conditions are terrible, how much time did we spend with them? We kept them, we treated them, managed them until they came out. What we are not to do, yes, when they have come out, they have added. But for us, we also managed up to the level we could afford. People who have worked within the corridors of, of, of Uganda prisons have different tales. I'll give you a classic example of Eddie Mutwe, who, of course, we all remember. For shaving him. You know, he came and cried and really narrated how he was treated and be shamed and, you know, he, he even broke down as a man. And it was quite, you know, emotional for us to watch what was happening there. Sol Solomon, there, is, there are things which are matters of the law. It is a clear-cut instruction in the standing orders that a prisoner on admission must be searched. And the search is called strip down. Strip down means they must remove all the clothes and in case they find there are marks on the body, those, those, there must be a documentation of those marks. Because tomorrow after one week, that's why everybody you hear them running, they're telling you we have been tortured prisoners. When you say let's go to court, nobody goes there. Because there is evidence that as you came in, these marks were on you. So. If you came with these marks, who put them on you? It's not here where you are. Now, the, it is clear, a, a, a remand prisoner for the hygiene of the institution is supposed to be shoved. Whether you have been a rasta or what, those are things from out. So every institution, uh, the, even when you used to work for these institutions, UBC, NTV, there must be a code of conduct. There must be an organizational culture, and whoever comes in must conform. It's like right now, if you enter the prison, whether you are a president, whether you are a, a, a religious, religious person, the first thing you have to do is to have that yellow uniform on you. That's the beginning. So, so, so talk to us about the search. You talk to you. you search. Yeah. You see, it, it, some it, people... It, find, they, they, I, there are two types of searches. The first search is what we call the rub down. You touch, 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 and say this is enough. But when you are entering a person, uh, the, the conditions are clear that you have to do a strip down. The only condition which is accepted is that it is a man supposed to search a man and a woman to search a woman. But for purposes of saying that to me, you are not going to remove my shirt and check what is at the back, forget. But strip down, what do you mean? Like you naked? You remove the clothes, yes. Even the panty? I, yes. Tomorrow you will turn out and say, you see, they pierced me here. If there is no evidence that you came with that mark on the buttocks, how will, how will, how will, how will the prison defend itself? And, and actually, that's what has saved us. That we take record of how you have come in. Fortunately, a number of times, court will say, this person is complaining of ailment. Treat and bring a medical report. And we treat and we bring the medical report. 
So when you reach there and say, no, 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 I have been tortured here, say, yes, we have been tortured. Bring your evidence, we have ours. But don't you think that that needs to change? You tell the parliament to change the... I mean, how do you... For, for us, we... So you, to the you basically strip your people naked? That is the matter of the law. It is clearly indicated in the standing orders. I am not the one who wrote the law. These laws are acts. They, they, they originate from parliament. After that, you shave their hair. Th that, those are now the details of administration, which is still written. By the way, there is nothing you can do if it is not indicated down there. For example, when they were making these laws, they skipped talking about conjugal rights. And that's why we don't, we don't follow the conjugal rights. Because we don't have a binding law. Yeah. So, so according to you... That's why even recently when the court decided that prisoners must vote, they are going to vote for us. We have no problem. But as long as there was no law guiding us on, on voting... There are people who have complained that there is selective treatment. You shave some people there, you leave the Indians, you leave the whites, you leave all that. I am telling you... You only need to go there and you know that the moment you walk to the prison, the prison procedures are very simple and clear, and they are standard. So, uh, those who want to have the, the... Of course, because of the human rights you are talking about, we have provisions that if Solomon has come and has the capacity to have a flask, we don't refuse it as long as we don't, we don't see it in a danger. But if you don't have the flask, you cannot say Solomon brought the flask, Baina doesn't have a trask, a frask, so there is selective treatment. We have said bring what you have. You have failed to bring. Now you are complaining that somebody who has has brought. Because we are supposed to act fairly, that those who can afford can have something within the confines. If you can afford to have a fillet mattress, say okay, you bring it. If you don't have for us, we have blankets. So you are not going to say, this is sleeping on a fillet mattress which he brought, now me, I'm here. You see, they have only given me blankets. Frank, there have been allegations of torture within prisons. How true are these allegations? I, I am I'm trying to tell you that if you torture an inmate now, it is a personal responsibility. You are taken on according to the act. You know, a, a number of times I keep telling people that when something is an act of parliament, it's no longer... A, 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 a negotiation matter. The law is clear. The do's and the don'ts are clear. If you do it, you are taken on as an individual and you answer. As simple as that. But the institution too should be held accountable. No, because you have read and understood the terms and conditions of the act. So whatever I do, I don't do that I am ignorant about what the act says. If I am a prison officer doing my job, I should see where do I start, where do I end. What does this and torture act mean to me? So if I don't misinterpret it well, it takes me on. Actually, that used to be the problem that people were hiding, that you are suing attorney general, and then the individuals would use that cover. To, to do their heinous acts. The reason why I'm saying that, because we have seen inmates, first of all, some of them that have come limping, they've been beaten and battered by sometimes, you know, you, 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 different you know, agents. At what stage? I have been having a lot of difficulty with a number of uh, okay, media activists and human rights activists. What is the process of somebody going to prison? They, they are arresting agencies. After arresting, they align this person to court. Now, if the arresting agencies bring this person to court, and the person is telling you that, look, I have these marks, I am, I'm, I am I'm limping, now, and, and court says, prisons, take on these people, check them, treat them, bring the report. One, whose responsibility is it to tell the world who did what they did to this person. Is it the responsibility of prisons? So no, I, I am not competent because I have picked this person in court as is. I have been instructed on how to deal with the matter. I have done the matter. I have submitted a report. So is, is the obligation to say who did what where responsible? That's why I'm telling you that on entry, 
I have to have facts on how Solomon is so that if you have had a problem elsewhere, you understand better, you can always tell the public who did what to you. But anything that happens beyond court is where prisons take responsibility. I hope so. Um, yeah, I paused a little bit because we've seen nasty pictures of people who come to court when they are limping. Yeah, but at what time, at what point, how did they go to court? When they have... That's what I'm saying, you see, somebody has, so, somebody has, has been brought to court the first time limping. I, I can even go deep. Like, for example, we can have three scenarios. Somebody has tried to snatch a border border. These border border guys have got him and beat him. And the police has saved him and, and taken him to court. In what form does this police take this person? Won't he be limping? Now, you think limping stops in one day or two days or one week? If, if now we are instructed to treat now, when you're asking me why is this person limping, will I be able to tell? That is one scenario. Two, somebody have come to arrest Baine and I have resisted arrest. I have exchanged with the arresting officer, maybe in the process I have broken an arm, I, am, I have broken a leg, and this person I have been still arraigned to court because I have been arrested anyway and gone to prison. When I'm coming back, if the, if the bone was broken, it can't heal in one day or two days. Now, when, when this person is coming back, why on treatment? Now, do you, see, do you say these people of prisons, they are the ones who have broken the leg? Then genuinely, they are those who they have taken the laws in their hands, errant officers, and beaten, almost purple, and still brought to court. So it becomes unfair when you pile all this and push it to prison. And that's why we are very careful. We take you as you come. We measure you. We examine you. We record everything that we have to record. And we wait. Or maybe there is a fourth scenario of they pick a prisoner from you, interrogate them and torture them and send them back. That one can never happen. That one I want to assure you. I will even put my arm and they cut it. The moment the person has gone to the prison, that's why. I think that's why even a number of times people have been saying that, you know, how comes you bring a person to court after court has released, you don't help this person, they arrest this person. For us, our jurisdiction stops at a person has been produced to court, court has said you go. If the arresting agencies think there is still other charges, then they will pick you. The most important thing is that nobody can do anything within the prison precincts. Apart from maybe the inspector general of, 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 of police can write and request to interrogate a prisoner within the prison. And that one, there must be the seeing of a witness of a prison's officer. Because it's allowed to interrogate a, a prisoner in the prison. But it has to go through the official channel. Frank, are you sure that you don't hand over I inmates don't, to... I don't have to be sure. I, I, that is the standard. It's is not, it followed? It's, it, Are there circumstances absolutely. where it's broken? For your own information, at any one time of the day, reach the prisoner and you are an officer, they will give you the number of the prisoners in custody. Whether day, whether night, the accountability about the numbers of the people in custody is a standard. Even if you go now, every prison has a notice board. The prisoners who have slept there, the prisoners who have been opened, the prisoners who have gone forever, anybody who lives and comes is on a documentation, is what we call a gate pass. And it is a recording, which is standard everywhere. You can prove that. Okay. L let's talk about your budgets. You submit to Parliament um, and through the Ministry of Internal Affairs a budget of about $489 billion and you're given about 339 billion shillings. That's a shortfall of about 100 billion shillings. How does that affect you? So much. That's why I told you that we can now not progressively. And by the way, that money includes production. You know, we produce seeds, we produce furniture, we produce uh, commercial maize, we have livestock. So it's not only- Your poultry. The pro so, the most important, the, 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 when you go to the real money that is for the, 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 the prisoners and the welfare and everything, you find that we are operating at almost 
of what we need. And because of that, that's where we have congestion. Because of that, that's why sometimes, but it is not only us. Uh, if you are going, I have been, uh, the other day I saw the debate, somebody was like, when you go to Murago, you don't find the drugs. Now, if the National Referral Hospital has no drugs, then it becomes a miracle to think that prisons must have drugs which are even not in the country. So, we, we, we are operating within the means of our economy. That one we have to agree. Because a prison is, is a product of the society. The, the things which happen on the street, the things which happen in our community is what happens in the prison because our people come from the community, they stay with us for a time, and they actually go back. The, the challenges which we face are universal. That is why you find that, yes, those who can afford fly out for treatment, but how many Ugandans can afford to fly out? Riveron prisoners, how many Ugandans are failing to fly out? So, and that's where the challenge that we have to face, and I think we have to fight hard and improve our economy so that we improve the welfare of all of us. Even Ascaris, for if, if I look at it this way, the international Ascari to prisoner ratio is one to three. But in our country, it's one to seven. So, do you know that mental stretch? That a prisoner is supposed to be, a staff is supposed to oh, supervise three prisoners, now he's supervising seven. That is more than a double. That, 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 is a, that is a psychological impact on this person in everything. That's why if you check in the records, how often do we take our leaves? How much counseling do we even get? When you are talking about these conditions, when the conditions is bad, you, you think a prison officer is going to walk away? The prisoners are in, you are there. They are being beaten by rain, you are there. You are part of the system. We would love to have better conditions, yes, but the circumstances are that we have a mandate to keep and we are trying our best within the means. Prison is supposed to be a place of rehabilitation rather than punishment rather than, you know, I mean, it's supposed to be, someone has to do time to change them through rehabilitation. And you're telling me that places that used to have workshops have now been turned into bedrooms. Well, not, not, because you see, one beautiful thing about our country is that for us, when we, we did the dynamic security component and open door policy, it has made us to have a friendly relationship with our inmates. That is why the reoffending rate in Uganda has gone now to 15%. By the way, that is the, high, that is the best in Africa. In, in, if you compare with like South Africa, South Africa is at 44. If you go to this even Ghana, Nigeria, they are in the 30s. So the rate of reoffending in this country is actually very low. It is even worse. I was reading it for United States of America, reoffending rate is 96%. So... Actually, our programs are working. These programs of education, seeing inmates doing exams, these workshops... I saw Chigula see, graduating uh -huh. with... Uh, if Chigula could use the knowledge she got and fought a death penalty and she survived with it, I think that tells you that, well, we may not have resources. But She's one of your success stories. But within the means that we are operating, we are making very fundamental progress. That is why I want to tell you and I want to challenge you. You get the last 10 human rights reports in the last 10 years. You will see the position of, of prisons against other agencies who are involved in law enforcement. Frank, I should be honest with you. I've been to, to, to prison and on that, I, I know what happens there. I, I was really amazed at what happens in there. Uh, there's primary school, there's secondary school, there is carpentry. There is um, uh, fabrication, yeah. there is, I don't know about is agriculture. In, uh, farms, farms. Yeah, farms. You, I was and, with you in this uh, Yes, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Amazing, <laughs> yes, the farms, <laughs> the prison <laughs> farms, and I'm yeah. going to come to that. Yeah. I saw, you know, inmates at that time, Bad Black was there. <laughs> and, you know, he she came was... Out, she came out good brown. She, <laughs> yeah, I, it was just fascinating what I saw, you know, the braids, the, but also the kindergarten for the children, I really was impressed by what, what was happening there, the churches, the mosques, the volleyball. 
I, I don't know. I, 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 and, I, and people, some people said, well, I was just doing PR, but it wasn't really. It was just showcasing what was happening there. But beyond that, out of the Luzira prison, some other facilities out of Kampala, you know, look at the prisons out of Kampala. Some of them are in a very pathetic state. Um, move out of Kampala a little bit and, and, and go well, to the what I agree, upcountry what, what I need prisons. To agree they with are you. really yeah, terrible. What I have to agree with, with you. With water challenges, with, you know, broken sewer systems. Some of it is really dilapidated. And, Frank, you need to admit that they need an overhaul and they need a... Re now, you see, uh, like uh, Socrates said, life not examined is not worth living. Viewers and Solomon, we need to know where we come from. Until 2006, we used to run two systems of prisons. We had local government prisons and central government prisons. Until... The the, 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 the the situation in the in the in the local government prisons became totally unbearable, like it is growing and becoming unbearable for the juveniles. Then a decision was made that there is a merger. We inherited 174 prison units from the local government with 15,000 staff. I mean, 15,000 inmates and 1,600 staff. Now. When you hear 174, these were sub-county cells for graduated tax defaulters turned into prisons. So to, 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 to turn those 174 units into modern prisons has been a very big toll order. And that's why we have been doing piecemeal. You do the, the, the water system. The, the bucket, you do away the bucket the, system. That bucket system, my no. goodness. But it's still operating no, up no, to no, now. No, 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 no. We have, by the way, we have, we, have, we, have, we have chased that one. And, but I want to tell you, like, if you had enough resources, that would be a wonderful thing to do. But slowly, fortunately, out, that's, that's why now I'm telling you that right now we have 264 prison units. But out of those 264, 174 were inherited from the other system. And that's why we have been trying to touch here, touch there, touch there, and improving. Genuinely, yes, we have not reached where we want, but we reach there. But we should also appreciate that we have come from very far. The bucket system. The bucket system, apart from, I don't think we even have more than three places where you can find it. Because we, we improvise it. We did the eco sun. Ecosan solved that problem of the bucket system. Mm. And it was also, when you would look at it, it was looking as if it was cheap, but it wasn't. And it's not something you could do in a very, very, like one, two, three years. You see, uh, I keep explaining this, that when you reach a prison like this, a prison unit, you say, I think if I had something, if one had something like 200 million, this place would be sorted once and once for all. But if you are going to find that you have 100 units, which each one needs 200 million, then how much money is that involved? So then that means you have, you have to hurry slowly. You will hurry but slowly because you have to operate within the means that are available. Yeah. And that's why you see, thank God, we started things. While we were talking about the prison, we didn't even have staff quarters. That's why we started the low cost housing to ensure that our staff have where to sleep. You know, surprisingly, a number of times we are all looking at these prisoners. And but we don't, for, we don't no, look but at nobody, the staff. Nobody ever thinks that, <laughs> but is this staff any day better? When the conditions are bad, when the, the feces are smearing, you think the nose of, of, of the staff is capped. <laughs> They're also part of the system. They're part of, part of the system. We come from very far. I keep telling people there was a time when I had one pay of uniform for more than two years because of the economy. Okay. Uh, uh, Frank, let's talk about the, the, the subject which is feared to be talked about. And that's the subject of farms, prison farms. Clearly, I know that prisons has so many farms where they grow a lot of maize and other... Uh, maize, cotton, maize seed, soya bean, sunflower. Accountability for the food that is being grown. 
Some of it is consumed by the prisoners themselves. Actually, the we have also heard that mm. some of the top prison officers sell this food out for a living. I, I want to tell you if you did that. And that's corruption. Who, who, whoever did that or whoever can do that won't stay. Because the, 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 the food we grow is calculated to feed us for eight months. The, the food we grow has a system. They bring the seeds, they bring the fertilizers, they give the target. There is inspection at every stage until you harvest and declare. We have auditors. So you, you cannot play around with that. But amidst that, we should also know that we are allowed as prison officers to have plots of land dig them, harvest, and supplement our salaries. Because we also want children to go to school. Uh, a decision was also made. The sister forces are getting dry ration. And the decision was also made that since for us we grow our own food, our own stuff, that's what I'm telling you, that everybody is looking at a prisoner. When a prisoner is standing there the whole day, you think a staff is eating. So a decision was made that also our staff must get ration. And they get ration per quarter. And it has improved our welfare, because that is welfare of the staff. But you see what happens is that if you're in charge of a prison, like Chigo for example, you're given a target to produce maybe 800 kilograms of maybe maize. So what you do is you overwork the inmates so that they produce maybe a thousand. But, but so the, but the you target, hit your the target, target of 800 no, the target is on and then, the target is on the, and then the you're working. able to get an extra three, four hundred, and which you sell, which you say it's okay because you're so... I want to tell you that it is clearly demarcated. The government chambers are clearly marked, measured. And the process of working on them is, uh, is there. And that's why I'm saying that. But at the same time, every staff on a prison farm is entitled to a plot to grow food and make some, generate some income to sustain their family. Because ideally, if you look at the salary of a warder, a warder gets about 320. If he's have to have, let's say, three children with his wife, 320,000, can it he, can he even educate somebody in a UPE school? So they have to look elsewhere. So, the, the, since they work in shifts, when this person is free, he's supposed to you exploit these resources. Because if a government was able to pay, a, 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 how do they call it? The, the, this, the, 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 the salary which is, 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 can, can help to manage the, 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 the living, that would be okay. But in the circumstances, the, the, the people must be encouraged to be industrious and ensure that don't steal from a government, but make yours and uh, have a living. And so, and we've also heard from inside sources that the people who are managing these farms have to give back to the people in higher places. They are seniors, and they are seniors, and they are seniors. What, 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 and uh, that also, uh, uh, if you don't do that, then you risk being uh, Solomon, reshuffled. Solomon. You've, you've heard this, yes. Frank. You have heard this, so, that for uh, you to manage uh, a certain uh, farm, Solomon, you me, have to give back me, to the let system. Me, let me give you and if you don't, you will actually be removed. Uh, uh, let me start with This the, is an inside, no, inside that, source. That is not true. Let me give you the first inside statement. Just... I think that early last year, we were here in Kororo when Uganda prisons got an award for receiving money and using the money according to what it is supposed to use it for. That was a recommendation from Auditor General around with the Minister of Finance. Actually, the award was given by the President as the best users of their vote, effective use uh, of the vote for prisons. That, what does that one tell you? It tells you that our systems work. Those things of kickbacks can't work. Because you see, if you do that, that's how you kill the system. If you tell the officer in charge that when you harvest 100 bags, I want 20, 
he will also remove another 15 by the end of the day. But that's what happened. No, we have never failed unless it is natural calamities like the drought or maybe army worms. We have never failed to hit our target. Two, when we got a directive to, to, to grow maize seed, do you know that right now 30% of the maize seed on the market comes from Uganda Prison Service? Actually, the other day the president wrote instructing that Minister of Agriculture should find a way of using our seeds for the parish development model because our seed is, is, is its, its germination is, is 97 to 99%. It's clean, it's not adulterated. That tells you that our systems, by the way, I'm not blowing the, the, our own trumpet, but our systems work and exemplary. Frank, and they speak for themselves. Frank, if I gave you one minute or 30 seconds to speak to the president directly, what would you tell him? I would tell him that the, the way we are managing prisons, if all government agencies were following what we are doing, this country would advance in less than five years. So you're literally telling... Because there is accountability for each and everything is done, the systems work as they are laid down in the books without cutting corners. And everybody is there to do their part. That is why you can even finish six months without hearing about the Commissioner General of Prisons. But the systems are running. You would beat his politicians to pulp. Because with prisons, it's this and nothing. No negotiation. There is no it's, negotiation. It's discipline. Absolutely. If it is eating, it is eating. If it is sleeping, it is sleeping. If it is working, it is working. It's standard. And if you keep the standard and keep that culture, there is nothing that can't work out. That's why I will tell you that our staffing level is at 26%. I told you our budget level is at, 40, at, 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 at 5%. But when you look at our performance against all the other agencies, how comes we seem to be doing much better than everybody? Systems. Systems. Frank Baine, thank you so much for speaking to us. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, President Museveni, I think, has heard you. Systems. 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 And standards. And standards. Frank Baine, thank you. Okay. I've been speaking to Frank Baine, Commissioner of Prisons and Spokespersons of the Uganda Prison Services. About everything <laughs> prisons, what he has promised us is that systems work and that they have worked amidst all the challenges. I'm Solomon Serwanja, and this is The Hard Questions.